little pony, my little pony. Ah. Darn it! Now I thought I fixed that issue. Yeah, excuse me for a moment. Dang, CD player hasn't worked since 2003. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me introduce myself. I'm the Brony Physicist, and far be it from me to question the awesome advances provided to us by technology, but it appears the CD player I was recording from is on the fritz again. For the 20th time. Darn shame, too. I thought I could just hammer out a quick and easy pony video, but it seems there's been a bit of a delay. Excuse me while I remedy the situation. <laughs> that is not good. Well, I tried to fix it, but in a shocking twist, it seems I might have accidentally, without intent, broke everything. But that's okay, because I have one ace in the hole. What about the physics of Equestria? That's a question that can only be answered by an amateurishly animated title sequence and stock news introduction music! Now before I begin this video, allow me to preface it with the obligatory reference to Physics Brony's video where he detailed some of the physics of Equestria, and he did it quite well. Though I was mostly satisfied with the conclusions, I do feel he left out a few details, made a few incorrect assumptions, and well, missed out on a few things. Now I could be just like a normal person and say, oh, he was making a humorous presentation about the inconsequential physics of an imaginary world, but I'm a pedantic little guy with too much free time on his hands. So, without further ado, allow me to elaborate on the physics of Equestria that have not been discussed. One of the first things that is mentioned in the Friendship is Magic series, right in the first minute of the first episode, in fact, is that there are two sisters who bring up the sun and the moon every day and every night. And, very obvious spoiler alert, those two sisters are Princess Celestia and Luna. But, the terminology, bring up the sun and the moon, implies that in the frame of the solar system, the sun and the moon appear to be revolving around the Earth. This would imply that gravity does not work like in our universe. But as you can see, as Pinkie Pie illustrates in hop, skip, and jump, and every other moment that she is perpetually bouncing, it doesn't look like gravity behaves any differently, but in fact looks a lot like real Earth. So the gravity in Equestria, on a small local scale, must approximate Earth gravity. But the implication behind that is that the sun in Equestria should not exist. How did I get there? Allow me to reason. In order to burn, the sun undergoes thermonuclear fusion of small elements like hydrogen and helium into heavier elements, thereby releasing massive quantities of energy in large amounts. This happens because the sun has enough mass to contract in on itself and provide the high heat, temperature, and pressure necessary to ignite fusion. And the force that makes it all happen? You guessed it, gravity. So the real reason the sun is a thousand times more massive than Earth is because it needs to sustain fusion in order to actually be a sun. What? Did you suspect anything else? Did you think God just decided one day, The sun should be big! And just left it at that? If that is what you think, you're probably Pat Robertson, in which case, why are you watching this video? Anyway, now I'm off track. Where was I? Oh yeah, ponies! Now, in the theory I just proposed for Equestria, the first proposition is that the sun goes around the Earth, the second proposition is that the sun is massive enough to sustain fusion, and the third proposition is that real-world gravity is approximated for simple systems. These three statements cannot coexist as any combination of two nullifies the other. So let's send it all to hell, make like good scientists, and start over. The second theory is that maybe the Earth does go around the Sun. After all, geocentrism was common thought on Earth for many years. It does look a lot like the Sun moves around the Earth, so the conclusion is natural. Except for Sirs Copernicus and Galileo, who noticed the weird motion of the planets and thought maybe we were just wrong. And thank God the political and religious figures were so eager to admit their mistake and adopt a new scientifically verified theory. 
Anyway, now I'm off track. Where was I? Oh yeah, ponies. Now according to this theory, Celestia and Luna control the rotation of Earth rather than its revolution. But there's an issue. The sun and the moon need to be constantly raised and lowered every day, otherwise time stops. Just like in the series premiere, Celestia disappears for the Summer Sun Festival and its constant night. But there's no slowing down in space. Remember Newton's first law? Everyone's favorite physics law, although in real physics you rarely ever find an interesting scenario where it's wholly applicable. It states that a body in motion will stay in motion, and a body at rest will stay at rest until an outside force is exerted on the body. And in space, outside forces are few and light years between, so the Earth shouldn't stop rotating once it starts. Luna and Celestia would just have to use their magic once to get the whole thing in motion, and then just leave it at that. No continuous raising and setting of the heavenly bodies. Just one kick, and then hang around. My resolution to this problem is that we can't assume that space in Equestria is wholly empty. Instead, we can go with the luminiferous ether idea of the late 19th century, but instead we can say that it isn't massless, it isn't infinitely rigid, and it doesn't affect the speed of light. Now, it's possible for there to be an invisible ether acting as a fluid which slows down the rotation and revolution of Equestria Earth, which Luna and Celestia have to keep in the balance. It makes sense, the way the day-night cycle never ceases. But there is one caveat, though, because the ether would also slow down the Earth's revolution, the Earth would lose its energy and spiral into the sun without the princesses. But lucky for ponies, they are there, and this will never happen, provided that Luna and Celestia take no unexpected breaks or vacations. But we can assume that's exactly what goes on between the two sisters. They raise and set the sun every day. It's like dark matter, political cooperation, or sex on network television. You know it's there, you just can't see it. Also, under this theory, general relativity becomes complete garbage. But hey, that's someone else's problem. I'm the brony physicist, and I'll solve the physics of Equestria, one insane theory at a time.